A big warm welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, I'm talking about arm action in the golf swing. I feel it's a really important asset for you to understand how it is going to affect your golf club and ultimately your golf ball. If you're a big watcher of my channel, you will appreciate the four ingredients I always have up on the screen, the attack angle, club path, face angle, and face to path. The face to path is the biggie, the one that will dictate how much bend we see to the left or bend to the right. Go check out one of my videos on face to path. It will really give you the insight that you need to controlling the bend of the ball in the sky. So today, arm lift. Arm lift is ultimately in your backswing, through strike, and in your through swing, dictating the balancing act of the shaft, and ultimately will set the direction the face points in. So let's talk about takeaway. We will all appreciate that the golf club handle sits underneath us at a dress. Some of you might be further away, some of you might be closer. If you haven't watched my Every Tour Pro Does This video on setup, it's a biggie. Really under, makes you understand how the club shaft and the spine work together at a dress and the geometry that I'm looking for as an instructor. If the arm lift happens early in the backswing, now every golfer has arm lift. And there's thoughts out there on one plane. You cannot, and there is not one golfer in the world that one planes a golf swing. And what that means is that there is not one golfer that keeps the handle at the same height at the top of the backswing as he is at a dress or her at a dress. The golf's backswing would look like this, which wouldn't work out too well for power. So let's first of all understand that there is not one person in the world that has a one plane golf swing. Any golfer that moves the club in their backswing will have some form of arm lift. Now, when this arm lift happens, will dictate whether your club shaft starts to lay down or whether your club shaft starts to stand up. Depending on what type of golfer you are, if you are the type of golfer that has your club shaft laying down, and then starts to stand up on the way down, your club shaft lays down, and then the club shaft stands up on the way down, you might want to consider how much arm lift you have initially in your backswing. Because if the arm lift, as we start to rotate the trunk, the arm lift starts to raise up early, the effect that the handle will have on the club head will be opening the face for the lion's share of golfers and laying the shaft down, which will be a huge contributor of crossing the shaft over at the top. If you're a golfer, that would like to start to see their club shaft stand up early on in their backswing, you might want to consider getting the handle a little deeper at the top of your, a, a little deeper at the early phases of your backswing. So you feel like the handle doesn't raise up, the handle stays underneath the chest, and then the handle lifts, there's the arm lift, which will then start to change how the club shaft balances at the top of your backswing. Now the forearm rotation is an integral part of allowing this club head to balance and be sympathetic to when you lift your arms up in your backswing. If you're the type of golfer that has been a crossover guy at the top, your forearm rotation at the arm lift phase of your golf swing 
would have been internal, internal with your right arm. And that crossover comes from the internal rotation of the forearms, but also from a shallowing of the shaft or too much of a laying down of the shaft in the early phases of your golf swing, or else you wouldn't have enough of an angle of attack on the golf ball if you returned it super shallow. So this arm lift for both types of golfer, whether you lift your arms up early or you lift your arms up late, will for the majority of you really set whether this club is laid down or stood up at left arm parallel to the floor. So at left arm parallel to the floor, my left arm could be inside and my left arm could be outside of my chest. And as I say, that is ultimately being dictated by how early you lift your arms up in a backswing. When you then start to reach the top of the backswing, and let's talk about from left arm parallel, if you were then to not have any more arm lift from this phase onwards, your arm plane would be below your right shoulder. If you're the type of golfer that likes to continue to feel your left arm up, you're gonna be the type of golfer that invariably will be slightly shorter in rotation because we see for the majority of golfers, when you have a short rotation in a backswing, we invariably see more arm lift as a golfer than when we see someone that's more rotated in a backswing, we tend to see lower arm planes to accommodate. So ascertaining what type of golfer you are is important. And that's why you'll never find any of my videos telling you what you should do, but I merely give you the insights into what influences the golf club in a backswing, downswing, or, or through swing and strike. So that's some insight into what goes on in the, in the backswing. Now, in the downswing, and if you haven't checked it out, my what happens next video, how you energize the club in your downswing, you might be the type of golfer that likes to lower their arm plane very quickly in an effort to swing the club inside out. Now you might be the type of golfer and the type of golfer that I enjoy watching, you might be the type of golfer that likes to keep his handle high in pull, i.e. you keep your arm lift, and you like to apply your arm drop later in your downswing to make the attack angle, the path line and the face line up. Depending on when you lower your arms in your downswing, if it is early in your downswing or late in your downswing, you will dictate where the energy of this handle is working through strike. So if you are someone that is late to lower the handle, you are more likely to be a guy or girl that starts to line the face up nicely through strike, starts to have a nice angle of attack starts to have a nice path from the inside, starts to have a face closed to the path. Or if you're the type of golfer that likes to drop the handle down early in your downswing, hold your body off, and then start to raise the handle up through strike, you'll tend to be the type of golfer that hits up on the ball, no angle of attack, garbage, long way from the inside, 18 degrees, no pressure on the golf ball, and the type of golfer that likes to roll the club face through strike, utter tripe. So 
this arm lift in the backswing, this arm lowering in the downswing, where you feel that happens, will ultimately start to change the energy of where the handle will work in this part of your golf swing. So if you are the golfer that is always sick and tired of not having any leg action and a follow through that is super high, you might want to think about and consider when you lower your arm action in your downswing. If you're the type of golfer that likes to see more of a Tommy Fleetwood finish, a little bit lower, a little bit more rotated, arms down and across you, you might want to think about making the sensation of the arms lowering later in your downswing to make that happen. And I think you'll find that when you start to take on board, a little out of breath, take on board where this handle is going up and when this handle is going down, you will start to understand the balancing point. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, 60% of you are not subscribed to my channel. So if you're watching this and you're enjoying my content, do give me a like and a subscribe because I would really appreciate it. And I would really like to bring you better, bigger content going forwards. So hit that subscribe button while you're here. So you'll understand the balancing act that the handle plays on the shaft and the face alignment. So understand where you need to start to direct your handle, where you need to lift your handle, where you need to energize your handle, where you need to lower your handle to hit the shots that you want to see. I think you'll find that's good coaching and I look forward to seeing you next time.